Well, hey there, guys. Welcome back to the Animation Block Cartoon Podcast. This is episode number 21. We've got, once again, some really fun topics to talk about today. Um, A pretty fast-moving week of animation, uh, specifically revolving around actual animated movies, which is something we don't talk about too much on the Animation Block, but two movies in particular, we got to get down, we got to get them in the books here, and especially one animated show that is just so, so, so good. So uh, we're going to start off today, we're going to start off today's animation block with a brand new movie review from the all new animated movie from WAG or Warner Brothers Animation Studios, um, Storks, which a movie that I really wasn't looking forward to, Um, it looked kind of dumb, Uh, I wasn't expecting much from it. I was kind of just expecting, you know, Warner Brothers just trying to make some, you know, quick money off of an animated film. Uh, You know, I saw some big names attached to it like Andy Samberg. Um, But, you know, again, it didn't really interest me that much. Um, you know, I, I always I always have to commend the animated style. Really, I do because I just love where animation is going, especially within movies. It looks beautiful on screen, but just overall, I wasn't really intrigued by it. And then I go to see the movie, and I, I'm blown away. I really was. It, I'm not saying it's the greatest animated movie I've ever seen. But you better believe it's up there on my funniest animated movies of all time list because this movie was absolutely hilarious. The plot really worked for me and it actually had kind of like a Toy Story 3 vibe to it at the end where it really almost made you tear up and just I'll, I'll give you all my thoughts on it. I'll kind of break it down. I'll kind of tell you guys whether or not you, you should see this film um, from a true animated fan. Um, of course, I'm obviously not going to be your, your end-all be-all. I'm probably not even even going to be your deciding vote on whether or not to see this movie, but hey, just just some opinions from another guy, right, on YouTube. Uh, then we're going to be moving on to some really fun Rick and Morty season three news and possible crossover with Gravity Falls. So they've they're really been teasing out a season three premiere date, uh, the, the executive producers, all that. We know it's coming sometime in 2017. They originally said late 2016, but, you know, animated is kind of an interesting world and you know everything kind of gets pushed back as as you kind of come upon new challenges Uh, it takes like nine months to make like one episode so it's gonna be sometime some probably sometime probably in 2017 Uh, but if you're not watching Rick and Morty you have to be I am not joking I am not joking I I just remember watching the first couple episodes it's just so good the you don't you feel like it's not but it is it is so good and uh, some things that they had that they ended up doing in season two led a lot of people to kind of wonder would there be some sort of crossover with Gravity Falls because the like the creator of Gravity Falls uh, like worked uh, is work is like kind of a big part of Rick and Morty. Uh, it's like his best friend and all that. Whatever, it, it's hard to explain. But Rick and Morty and Gravity Falls are very connected, and it's very surprising because one is a you know very adult animated you know comedy slash sci fi series, and the other one is a Disney you know uh, I'd say you know kid to adult uh, animated series about mysteries and you know kind of supernatural stuff. But there were some things that could lead to a crossover, especially in Season 3, and I think that'd be a really cool way to utilize both characters. I really would love to see these characters interact, so um, we'll talk about that. And then we're going to close off the episode with... (sighs) 
the Smurfs. Uh, I, I don't even know the subtitle. If they're calling it the Smurfs movie or something like that. Nope, nope, I'm sorry, I mean Smurfs, The Lost Village, yes, yes, they've released a trailer for it, uh, I'll give my thoughts on it, you know, we'll, we'll see, um, you know, I've never been the biggest fan of the Smurfs, I'm not, like, against them, I just, they weren't, like, something that I really grew up with personally, uh, I have watched some of the older cartoons, and they're fun, uh, they're definitely iconic, and they're definitely a, 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 a franchise that, you know, it's bound to be brought back at some point. If you guys recall, a couple of years back, they made these, like, kind of hybrid uh, Smurfs live-action movies with... Not live-action, but, like, the they used CGI animation and mixed it with, like, Neil Patrick Harris. And it, they did two of those films, and they were kind of bad. So they're rebooting it. It's fully animated this time. Um, so I'll give my thoughts on that. But to be honest, it gets back to a topic that I talked about a couple of weeks ago of rebooting and just rebooting rebooting to because it's popular and that's what you know it'll make money because it's a known franchise and then you look at something like storks which i'm about to give my thoughts on but i, I it's an original like it's an original idea and it's gorgeous you know it is something that i do think should be seen so i i don't see why it'd be so hard for an animated studio like what is it sony to just come up with something fresh and new instead of trying to just milk this idea of the smurfs because clearly it didn't work the first two times the rebooting it for some reason maybe the film's gonna be good i don't know it's gonna be fully animated fully animated gargamel um but you know it's it is what it is, you know, and we're getting the film, uh, Demi Lovato, all that, but we'll talk about it in just a moment. But right now, let's start in with my Storks movie review. So again, I really had no expectations for this film. I thought it would be garbage. I thought it would be nothing. I didn't care about it, other than the fact that I'm like, hey, that's some really nice animated style. And uh, I, I actually got a couple laughs out of the trailer, especially from Junior's dad. I thought he was really funny in the trailers, but other than that, I didn't really care, you know, and uh, of course, it's starring Andy Samberg as Junior, uh, Katie Crown, who of course... You probably have never heard of her before, but she's a voice actress, and she is phenomenal. I don't even believe it. I, I was like, I think I've heard this woman before. No, I haven't. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm sure I've heard her on animated shows and movies as, you know, extras, but, you know, you feel like you've seen these people before because she's, like, the lead, one of the leads with Andy Samberg, but you haven't. Uh, and I really hope that she gets more and more gigs because I think she really deserves it. Uh, Kelsey Grammer is Hunter. You've got Jennifer Aniston in there um, as, like, the mom. You've got Ty Burrell in there as the dad. You've got Anton Starkman, who I'm not too familiar with, as the kid. And then, of course, you've got Key and Peele, who are playing the Alpha and the Beta Wolves, and they were so good. Oh, my God. They're, they're so great on their shows and all that. And Key, I don't know if you guys saw Keanu. Maybe some of you have. But they're just such, there's such great comedic talent there. And they really, you know, do that um, as just the wolves here. And I, I appreciate that. Um, and for some of you guys who thought maybe that bit may have been ruined in the trailer, it really wasn't. You got uh, Danny Trejo in there. Um, you've got Ike Barinholtz, uh, you guys might remember him as Griggs, uh, from, um, uh, Suicide Squad and a couple other movies. Uh, you have some, the the guy from The Lonely Island in there with Andy Samberg. Uh, but one name I really want to point out is Steven Kramer Glickman as Pigeon Toady. Kind of the villain character. So well done. Uh, I just remember this guy from the the, the Nickelodeon show that uh, used to be on Big Time Rush is like Gustavo, I believe, was the character he played. I I'm so pleased for this guy. Another person who I, I is not a very well known actor and all that. You know, he's he's kind of, but for him to to play such a great character with so much great talent there, I I really thought just so well done so overall the characters really worked for me and uh, again the animation style really worked for me but this is kind of where the I was a little bit lost in the trailer and I trailers are misleading of sorts but the basic gist of it is like the storks they're they've moved from um, delivering babies to packages so you kind of have to believe in the whole idea that storks used to deliver babies which clearly isn't the case you know i'm sure there's children watching and for that reason i think we're gonna we're gonna skip the the next part um of, of how of why babies really aren't 
delivered by Storks. But the bottom line, bottom line, is that they they play off the fact that Storks are real. They 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 did that thing. They they used to deliver babies. All of that. That's real. Um, but as time's gone on, they have they've they've started delivering packages for like a like a kind of Amazon type ish company. They don't call it Amazon because like copyright and stuff like that. But you know, it's some some other name I forgot. But they they're basically like an Amazon, and they they're they're the storks are like drones, and the 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 storks they deliver your you know let's say you ordered a shirt or you ordered a stapler or a computer or an action figure from Amazon. Storks will be delivering that instead. Um, but then this orphan character known as Tulip, played by Katie Crown. She comes in and she kind of accidentally reboots and restarts the baby delivering program. Um, and in which case, there's this big thing where you know the storks have to scramble to fix this, but you know the only way they can fix this with you know kind of stopping the baby delivering program is by delivering these babies again. Um, and it, it is interesting. And um, you know, I I thought it was thought it was fun. Um, and I I. Kind of like I really like the scenery, like uh, you know, on Stork Mountain. Uh, I thought that was really cool. They have to do these baby drops, um, and I don't know. I I really enjoyed it. And then like the Jennifer Aniston, Ty Burrell characters, they come in, um, and then they play a role into all of that. Uh, then you know you they you see they have to deliver these to like penguins. They have to deliver them to uh, the, the wolves. They have to deliver them to actual humans. Um, and it's really interesting. It was a lot of fun. I had a great time with it. And uh, you know it it. There was it wasn't it wasn't the best animated movie like I said it, it wasn't but it was cute you know it it had it had its very very funny moments and I think so funny that they will actually be remembered forever and I'm not gonna spoil any of them for you guys because I'm telling you I walked in here lowest expectations possible and I was laughing my ass off like five six times in a row I'm not I don't laugh out loud usually in a movie theater but I was it was like that. It was that funny. So you got to experience that for yourself. I really hope you guys walk into this movie low expectations just so you can really just be blown away. Um, and I don't know. I just appreciated over everything overall. Like I said, the animated style is just so great. Um, and, you know, they're the, the like helicopter... Uh, I forget what they call it. It's like a submarine helicopter thing that they're delivering them in. It's just so cool. Um, and I just, I loved it. I really did love this. And I, I think this is definitely a movie that you should be seeing, especially with your family. Take your family to see it. Take take yourself to see it. It's it's just one of those, those experiences, one of those type of things that I think really should, because it's so funny, just see it. Um, it's visually appealing. You know, I... I kind of felt like this might be another type of movie that you might just, you, you see the trailer for, it looks like crap, but you gotta take your kids to see it anyway. I think this is on the level of something like Finding Dory or, or Zootopia, where you can take your family to see this, but really it's not really about yourself, you're really or you're, it's not really about your kids, it's more about yourself. You, you're watching a good film, and I think that's what's really important here. The delivery from the voice actors, especially, like I said, Katie Crown, Stephen Kramer Glickman, uh, Andy Samberg, just so well done in a very great comedic style and I think a part of that is what makes it so good. So have you guys seen Storks? Do you want to see Storks? Um, you know Warner Brothers Animation, you know WAG whatever, they're not a very big studio the only big thing they have really under their belt is the Lego movie and then they'll be doing Lego Batman movie and everyone knows how amazing the Lego movie was but uh, this is definitely one to be checking out so go check this out. I think it's going to be a lot of fun uh, I don't. I'm not gonna. Ju- I'm not just trying to plug this movie for you guys. Seriously, I'm. I'm gonna be the first one to tell you when a movie sucks, and it's this one definitely doesn't. So I would check this out. Um, and we're gonna kind of transition right now into our second topic of the night, and that is all about the Rick and Morty season three possible crossover with Gravity Falls and premiere dates and just Rick and Morty stuff because that's. That's what everyone wants to know. So it's been quite a while since season two ended. And uh, because, you know, like I said, animated shows take such a long time to fully come to fruition with, 
you know, the drawings done, storyboards done, voice, you know, recordings are done, putting it all together, polishing it off, sending it to the studios. You know, it takes a lot of time. So there has not been an official release date set for season three. But, um, you know, because of certain events that have happened in season two, we can kind of assume what will be going on in season three. Uh, again, it's just such a phenomenal show. Uh, but I want to get back to the Gravity Falls crossover because to me that was such an interesting thing. You know, a lot of people were kind of talking about this back in season two, but this just popped up again in the headlines, uh, all about a possible crossover, uh, I guess kind of being more talked about by the executive producers, kind of saying that anything's possible, which really, that's what excites me here, because this show is such a wild card all the time, and personally, I love it for that, I love it, you know, you know, you go back to, like, something in the beginning episodes, like, the first, the first, like, the second episode, it's about, like, Inception, but it it was like inception within inception within all these crazy people that was the second episode of the whole show you know and uh, i to me I, that was almost one of my favorite ones just because it was it was just so out there and uh you know especially with the weird freddy krueger thing and all that but it was just the, the show has so many moments like that where it just throws you off but you love it for that and it, this creepiness but this hilariousness with rick my God, Rick is probably one of the funniest characters we have on TV today. Rick and Morty is probably one of the greatest shows on television right now, out of even live action. So, then you switch over to Gravity Falls. Now, Gravity Falls in itself is probably one of the greatest modern Disney cartoons out there. And uh, it's almost, to me, it seems to be more of an uh, adult show um, uh, for kids, though, if that kind of makes sense. Like, it... It's not, like, sexual, it's not adult vibe, but I think it it's on the level of something that an, a regular adult could sit down and, and enjoy. You know, they're half-hour episodes, and they're, they're, usually they have a, they're not filler, you know, they're, each one of them is progressing the story even further and even further, and of course, sadly, uh, Gravity Falls came to a series finale uh, back in 2015. It wasn't canceled, it was just the story was done. You know, they had told their story within three seasons, which was really awesome, um, but, you know, they've kind of said that Gravity Falls, it's not, it's just done. You know, they're not really bringing it back for a rebooted series or anything like that, but because it's still a show of an existence, it is an existed universe, um, and Rick and Morty, especially back in season two, they did this big thing where uh, there was, uh, well, I guess it, it, it starts on Gravity Falls and ends on Rick and Morty. So Gravity Falls, they were doing this big thing with wormholes and portals and a bunch of objects from the mystery shack. It all gets sucked up through this portal, um, and you don't really know where it goes. It's like this black hole type portal. And then on a season two episode of Rick and Morty, there they're doing this big thing. I forget the episode title, but they're doing this episode with all of these different universes and realities and all these different wormhole portals. And those same objects that uh, got sucked through the wormhole on Gravity Falls came out of a different wormhole on Rick and Morty. Now, of course, this could have just been an Easter egg. It could have just been a, a little, you know, nod, tip of the hat from the creators just having some fun behind the scenes. But really what, what interests me is that, you know, that happened, right? It, 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 they're both shows are so out there crazy, but they're both so amazing. And then you hear the executive producers last week. They're like, yeah, anything's possible. You know, we'd, we'd definitely be up for something like that. Rick and Morty's such an out there crazy show. Why not shoehorn in some amazing Gravity Falls stuff? And uh, just seeing those characters interact, you know, some PG, more PG level characters interact with, you know, more... PG-14 uh, R characters are really awesome. Um, and you have to kind of think that, you know, they, they'd actually maybe tone up the Gravity Falls characters because, you know, especially characters like Grunkle Stan, you can tell have a bit more of a, a more adult vibe to them in the sense of, like, they they really foreshadow and hint that, you know, Grunkle Stan might not be doing some so PG-13 or PG things uh, on the show, but they, they just kind of sh foreshadowed that to actually see, you know, a full blown realistic PG-14 or rated R version of maybe, you know, Grunkle Stan could be interesting, uh, especially in the context of a Rick and Morty episode. 
Um, I just think it'd be true awesomeness. You know, watching Rick and Morty kind of jump into the Gravity Falls world, and then watching the Gravity Gravity Falls characters jump into the Rick and Morty world, and then, you know, kind of just showing this whole continuity, and they could almost even play a really cool thing of just, you know, just, just little Easter eggs, like of all these different universes consisting of all these other animated series, and then they, you know, they make some sort of joke, like, holy shit, what is that, you know, Family Guy, or holy shit, what is that, SpongeBob? You know, c- clearly... It's that wouldn't happen, but you know, just just some fun th- fun things they could do because clearly Rick and Morty is capable of actually doing absolutely anything. They could literally give us any storyline ever, and I'd buy it because it's that good. And it's that they've set up this world where anything like that is possible. And for that reason and that reason alone, I would just be beyond happy to see this happen. Um, just great characters, super funny characters in Gravity Falls, and even funnier characters on uh, Rick and Morty, Um, and it's just, you know, when the show will be premiering, like I said, I'm expecting early 2017, you know, I'd give them the the next couple months, they might do some big thing in like January or February, and then you'll probably see this go throughout most of 2017, probably end around, you know, sometime in the summer, and then they'd come back with a season four uh, of some sorts soon after, I don't know, you know, usually their seasons are pretty long, but I have no idea, um, and then we kind of go on to something other, uh, something else that's interesting that's kind of being rumored right now for some season three news, Beth and Jerry, you know, R- uh, Morty's parents, um, they're rumored to be actually be getting a divorce, which could be a very interesting plot device to set up some new stories, uh, to set up some new scenery and locations uh, in the real world, in, in the realistic world, uh, not as much, you know, these, these other dimensions, which are really awesome. Um, I think they could do some really funny stuff with that and set up some really interesting plot devices with that, but also, you know, it could be have some really, uh, you know, dramatic consequences consequences for characters like Morty. Um, so we'll see where this goes, but, uh, you know, really fun stuff. I'm, I am hoping they, they do some sort of crossover with Gravity Falls, even if it is extremely minor. I love Gravity Falls and I love Rick and Morty just as much or more. So to see those two shows kind of collide would be really, really kind of awesome. Not more than kind of awesome, like really awesome. Um, but definitely a show that you should be looking out for. I'll be covering Rick and Morty, uh, as new news is released, you know, when they, announce some release dates, premiere dates, and of course I'll be doing some reviews when the show comes back in 2017, most likely. Keep your eyes peeled. Um, And just before I I jump into the Smurf stuff, I want to just throw out there, uh, next week should be an interesting week for the animation block, um, because a lot of these shows are starting. Uh, Mighty Magiswords is premiering this coming week. Uh, Milo Murphy's Law is premiering next week, so I'll be doing my reviews for both of those shows. And uh, also probably some some other Justice League action stuff. So a lot of the animated shows, they are coming back. They're starting. So get prepare, prepared for that. Uh, and just like when all that starts, expect a ton of, you know, just announcements from these animated companies. Like, especially for big properties and big shows like Rick and Morty. All right, kind of closing off today's episode of the Animation Block. We are jumping in to my thoughts on Smurfs The Lost Village trailer. Now, um, I did not care for the first two Smurfs movies, the live-action-ish, Neil Patrick Harris's ones, you know, from 2011, like, 2013. They're, they're kind of bad, you know, uh, they, they, they have some elements there that are interesting, but not really. Um, and, you know, they've completely rebooted this, they're rebooting it with a full-blown animated world, though we're going to be showing the animation, and I think that's the strongest part for me of this trailer, the animation. I, I'm so happy, like, I keep saying this, just the way animation is progressing, especially in movies, in this type of three-dimensional look, uh, it's just beautiful, it is magical, and it's encapturing in the in so, so much more, so so many more adjectives that I can't even think of right now that just really make it so it's appealing. And, and even if the movie looks like crap, you know, at least go to see it for just getting to see such an amazing world and style. Um, and I, I love that. I absolutely adore that about the modern animation. Um, so that's really great. They're rebooting the voice cast as well, like with Demi Lovato, Joe Manganiello, um... 
just the, the guy from Wander Over Yonder and who voiced F- Fixed Felix. I'm blanking on the name. Uh, but, you know, they're really, they're, they're trying to make this different, trying to separate it. Uh, they're calling it Smurfs the Lost Village. And to me, it seems like they're going to be finding a lost village. Uh, I, I really, again, don't know too much. Uh, the, we, we, what we've seen of the animated Gargamel, he looks really, really cool. No Hank Azaria this time, I know. Unfortunate. No, I'm just kidding. The Hank Azaria one was just just ridiculous. Um, but Gargamel looks cool. We only see a couple Smurfs. Um, and the way this trailer is actually done, it's interesting. Because they have the green, you know, parental guidance, you know, all that. The... The, the, you know, the this is an appropriate preview, that screen, you know, that you usually, when you go to the movies, you see the green screens, and that says, like, you know, this, this preview's, you know, uh, been, you know, okayed for appropriate audience, that screen actually stays on, and you, I thought my screen was frozen while I was watching this trailer, and no, it's actually part of the trailer, and, you know, the Smurfs kind of are playing with this green, you know, bungee, rub- rubbery thing, it, it's weird, I don't know, um, and, you know, it's the, like, again, the animation seems really great, but the jokes that they're putting in there, like, they're doing a butt joke, they're doing a fart joke, uh, a burp joke, and sometimes, sometimes you can get, you can really get away with a really funny one. I'm going to use the example here of Ghostbusters, the 2016 reboot. There was maybe the funniest fart joke I actually have ever seen or witnessed or, you know, heard um, in that movie with Melissa McCarthy and Christian Wiig. Just gold. That is what you want in a fart joke. And if you haven't seen Ghostbusters, that's fine. I recommend looking up that far- the fart joke scene. It is so funny. And it's not just, oh my god, someone farted, it's the best thing ever. No, it's like really critically worked out. In this case, with Smurfs the Lost Village, no, they're just trying to get little little three-year-olds to laugh. And, you know, you think about it and it's like, yeah, you know, these animated movies, they're kind of made for kids, of course, but they're... And I think animated movies are beyond that at this point. You know, you look at something like Disney, you look at something like Pixar, you even look at something like uh, Leica, Leica Studios, or um, what's another great example? I I don't know, I'm blanking right now. But there's a lot of great animated films out there, and they've become so critically acclaimed that in DreamWorks, that's the other big one, you know, they've become so critically acclaimed to the point where it's like, these movies, they're, they're, they're adored not just by kids, but by adults and by critics and something to look forward to. You know, this upcoming Disney's Moana movie, which I'm very excited for. I did that trailer breakdown for that on my uh, other channel, Infinite Attitude. I recommend go checking that out for my thoughts on Moana. But that movie has been ranked as one of the most anticipated films of 2016. What? Yes. And that's not by kids. Kids are not going on the internet and being like, yeah, that's my most anticipated movie of the year. No, these are adults and critics that are anticipating these movies so, so heavily. So, for something like the Smurfs, you can't get away with just, oh, I want to make that three-year-old laugh in the front row. No, you got you to gotta get away with adult humor that you can, you can make kids laugh, but also adults laugh. Um, and that's not really happening. So, you know, animation looks good. The voice acting seems okay. The, you know, the, the, the jokes are kind of not there. And then, for some odd reason, they start playing ludicrous. What? What? Luda. All right, I'm a big fan of the Ludacris, right? He's in the Fast and Furious movies, really solid rapper. Uh, rap music, definitely up there. Um, you guys can let me know in the comments if you're a fan of rap music. I guess it's kind of an odd question or odd statement, but rap music's good. I'm, I am a... There's certain rappers that I really like, and Ludacris is definitely one of them. Not He's not as big of a deal as he used to be, but they start playing the song by him, and it just doesn't make sense to me. You have a movie with the Smurfs, you have a movie with these amazing backgrounds and sceneries and, and animation, and then you fill it with these odd music choices, odd jokes, annoying fart jokes, and to me, it's just something that makes me go... Nah, I don't really care about this film. And of course, you know, if it gets good reviews, I'll check it out. And, uh, you know, if we see something else that really is capturing, I'll check it out. I mean, this is only the first trailer. It's only, like, the first look. But I always say, I always feel like first impressions are a big deal. And this, to me, does not give off a good first impression. Uh, Especially when we come off of two really crappy Smurf movies from a couple years ago. So... 
You know, honestly, I don't know what to really make of this. That it looks decent to below average right now, and we'll see how much money this makes. We'll see if it actually becomes critically acclaimed. I don't think it will, but this is coming out in 2017. Um, just keep your eyes peeled for any news. I probably won't be covering this too too much, but you know, I just get back to the whole idea of you know why did Sony need to do this? Why did Sony feel like this is the movie that they should be making right now? Why not come up with some really great, you know, brand new concept? Look at Despicable Me. This is a brand that was a brand new concept. Came out in 2010. It is huge. Okay? One of my favorite animated franchises ever. Ever. And it's an original concept. It's, it's something that is adored now. It's, the minions are icons. They are, they are comedic gold. They are very well known. They got their own spin-off film. And Sony's worried about, let's do the Smurfs again. It just, it's pointless. It's pointless. It's a waste of time. And, uh, I, I'm just, just disappointed by that. But, you know, we'll see. I guess this is a big deal for Smurf fans, and I'm I'm happy for those people, but I'm tired of getting these lackluster movies just because, you know, these studios think it's a good idea. Just because they think they can make money off an old franchise because, you know, it's a reboot, it's popular, it's pop culture, all that, social media. All, I'm tired of that. Give me something fresh, give me something new, give me something I can look forward to, and this is not that. So, have you guys seen the Smurfs trailer, the Smurfs Lost Village trailer? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Were you kind of in the middle like me? Um, and what about the Storks? Did you guys see that film? Uh, if you have... Was it what you wanted? Was it better than you thought? I definitely thought it was really good. Um, and I, I think this is going to be a movie that's definitely up there for Oscar contender this year. So we'll see what happens. Um, and also, Rick and Morty Season 3, is there a possibility we could be getting a crossover with Gravity Falls? Or is this is this just more rumors and rumors and rumors? Because that seems to be everything these days. Thank you guys so much for watching this Animation Block cartoon podcast. Uh, we are really getting up there. And I'm very happy that you guys are taking some sort of interest in this uh, and in the animation block. Um, it's, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun uh, doing these, you know, weekly now. Um, but, uh, you know, you guys let me know if there's some animated topics you want me to talk about. Like I said, next week, most likely Milo Murphy's Law, and uh, we're going to be seeing some, you'll be seeing some uh, Mighty Magiswords again, maybe some Justice League action, um, maybe some other stuff too. We'll see what goes on. But, uh, you know, you let me know if you want me to talk about anything in particular. Thank you guys again. Uh, and I'm Ryder um, from Infinite Attitude, Big Bang Network, Animation Block, all that. Uh, another fun one. Uh, thanks so much again, and we'll see you next week. See you later. Bye.